It's called The Inevitable, and I love that. Um, and this is, you're going to talk about the next 20 years and uh, I think a dozen innovations or technological forces that will shape those next couple of decades. Right, exactly. And that's primarily about digital technology and the ways in which it's going to roll out and affect our lives. Yeah. A lot of the things we've heard about, my premise is that much of what's coming, we don't have much choice about, is going to be coming anyway, no matter what we do. But we have a lot of choice in how we do it. Unintentionally, it started to become a theme of this show because we talk to a lot of people who are talking about the coming future and getting a lot of perspectives on it. I think, you know, this is a technology network, so we like to talk about the cool technologies around us. And I'm always a little nervous about uh, predictions because, uh, you know, that's one of the things you learn, and I, and I know you know, covering this field for so long, is it's unpredictable. And yet... I think you're right. I think we can kind of see the the outline of the future through the fog ahead of us. Right. So so I would say in a certain sense that the Internet, say, was inevitable, but Twitter was not. Exactly. T telephony, telephones were inevitable. Any planet you go on where they invented electricity, they're going to eventually invent telephones. But the iPhone was not inevitable. So the larger megatrends are very clear in part because they've already started but the specifics, the particulars, are completely unpredictable. And you're, 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 it's a fool's game to even try and predict those. Right. So we're not going to worry about that, but we will talk about the kind of outline, the shapes. Exactly. Those, right. those large genres, the, the, big, the big things, which are, have decades of momentum. So they've already been operating, and they will continue to go and increase in the next 20, 30 years. Those are the things I'm talking about. So, you know, it's like, imagine if 40 years ago, somebody from the future came and they said, hey, here's where this is going. For the next 40 years, every year, computers would get twice as fast, half as cheap, wow. twice as small right. for the next 40 years. Right. They didn't need to tell you anything about IBM or Apple. All, all you need to know is that Megatrend was going to be true reliably. Imagine what you could do. I mean, you first of all, if you wanted to be wealthy, you could be as wealthy as you wanted to just on that information. But you could also prepare our schools. You could prepare your own career. You could prepare politics to accept the fact that this is going to happen. And that's sort of what we're talking about now. That's what I use the word megatrends. Wasn't that – was it Alvin Toffler? No, that was John Nashbit. Nashbit, that's right. Who yeah. had a, a book called Megatrends? Alan Toffler's idea, his key thing was future shock. Future shock, yeah. Which meant that there was this ongoing state of anxiety <laughs> that we'd have about the future. She's not far off. I think that's right. proven true. Have have Nesbitt's, uh Megatrends? Uh, I mean, you you before before you embarked upon this journey, did you look back to see what others yes, said twenty years I, and yes, thirty years yes. ago? Actually, his megatrends were fairly good. I think the, one of them was this high-tech, high-touch. Yep. This idea that while the more and more that we made technology and this sort of intangible, that we'd also have this movement towards the, well, the touch, the kind of like what we now would think of as sort of the authentic, the, the um, you know, the expensive artisanal breads and things like that. So I think he was actually... Pretty good on most of his megatrends. That was 1982. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of the same distance. I mean, I, I suppose someday, 30 years from now, somebody will look back at the inevitable and see, was right. it? They'll was say, it? <laughs> how, how, how did how I do? How inevitable and what was, was it? it? You know, right, when we so designed this studio, it was at Nesbitt's high-tech, high-touch that I kept in mind. And, in fact, I've always done that when we've done our shows. We try to take human touches and humanize what would, you know, a lot of times technology, it's, it's brushed metal and the future and cyber bots and Borgs. Yep. And I wanted to make it, uh, you know, we have an old radio here. I wanted to really make it tactile and real and physical and less uh, scary. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think that's the way to go. And, and I think everyone's wrong about imagining the future as being this kind of Star Trek with all these right clean, sterile lines, when in fact it's much closer to the kind of Star Wars, Star Wars world where you have the new layered on top of the old. Right. 
and and, and there's kind of the worn the worn future. Um, or Blade and, and Runner, think, Blade Runner, maybe. Or Blade Runner. Why we love Blade Runner stream. so much. It was a yeah. gritty kind of dark future, a noir future. But that, but you know, I talk about high technology, new technology. But but I want to be very clear that most of the technology in the future is going to be old stuff. <laughs> if you look, if you look around your room, look at my around my room is mostly old old technology, concrete, wood, pipes, electrical stuff that's been around. That's the majority of the stuff. And in the future, that's going to be exactly the same thing. Um, we'll, we'll still have you know TCIP in, in in a thousand years from now. Yeah, we will. Yes. <laughs> Are you sure? It's like it's like you know it's, it's, a, it's like ATP cycles in 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 cells. You know that they, they haven't there. changed in millions of years. TCPIP is the new ATP. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. <laughs>